What was your first day in a brown truck like? Did my, you get a parking ticket? I did not. <laughs> my first day, I was actually loading the trucks, so I wasn't old enough <laughs> You to weren't drive. even on the truck. That's right. But uh, started while I was going to school loading trucks, and then after I graduated, I actually uh, delivered for a year on the trucks. Really learned the business from that point forward. Do you think that's a story of your generation? Do you think that can be repeated this time around? Do you think the barriers to entry are quite the same? Well, I think it can be repeated. I think that uh, that we have to do things a little differently for this generation. We have to. We can't be as patient. We have to identify people that have the talent and ability much quicker. They just uh, they have a lot of opportunities, and so. I believe it can repeat itself, but I think we will have to do it differently. David, a conversation we've had through the morning is the fact that we have unemployment at multi-decade lows, the longest expansion on record in the US economy, and yet there's this feeling of pessimism that not enough people are sharing in the success and things need to change. You've been close to this administration. What's your response to that? Well, I think there is reason to be optimistic right now, and I will point to last week the, the two deals, of course, the phase one China, US China, and then now with the president going to be signing the USMCA, both of those can have a significant difference and really help the small yeah. and mid-sized businesses to be able to compete globally. Let's talk about how and how for your business. You were in the room at the White House yes. for the phase one signing agreement. I remember the president calling you out by name. You have 200 weekly flights coming out of China, out to the rest of the world. Talk to me about the capacity utilization before this deal and what that's going to look like after this deal? What we have seen over the last year with the tariffs was that uh, the planes were less utilized coming out of China into the U.S. At the same time, we've seen China to other parts of the world actually increase. Mm -hmm. What we believe here with these, uh, the new uh, phase of tariffs not coming in and some of the others lowered, that that will spur trade between the two companies, countries, so we're excited about it. Your arch competitor has been more than challenged, and part of that has been their relationship with Amazon. So much of the Abney success is not what you do, it's what you've avoided, the challenges you've avoided. What's your best practice to stay out of trouble as we see FedEx so fractious with Amazon? What's your operational practice so you can avoid those kind of disturbances? Well, good point. I think the first thing is to listen, to listen to our customers, to listen to the market, and to also look at where the market is going and, uh, and be prepared. Years ago, we saw that e-commerce was just going to be this ever-growing trend, so we embraced it. We embraced it early on, and now we're able to bring those benefits to small and mid-sized uh, companies. Give us an operational example of how your small and mid-sized people can compete with Amazon and Mr. Bezos. Yeah, uh, several different examples, but I'll give you one in particular, and it's called Where to Go, and it is where we uh, take customers that are looking for warehousing uh, that they can compete with Amazon's uh, time in transit but they don't have enough to justify their dedicated buildings. We can put them in touch with uh, suppliers that are throughout the country, connect them with the UPS system, and they're able to, to mm. ship as if they're much bigger than what they really are. Let's talk about capacity, David. You took the tax cut, did a range of things with it. One of them was CapEx. You expanded capacity. Right. I understand by an extra 800,000 parcels per hour now can be processed over the last two years. That's quite phenomenal. I just wonder, though, how you judge when to build out capacity at a place like UPS at a time when many people are concerned looking at this sector right now thinking that maybe Amazon just does it on its own and they start to take care of business deliveries, the logistics, the whole thing. What are your thoughts on that? Well, when you think about e-commerce, of course you think about Amazon and Amazon's an important uh, customer. But we do business with 90% of the largest retailers and e-tailers around the world. And so we put emphasis there. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, on the smaller e-tailers and retailers, too. So it's really looking at the total picture and seeing not only how the market is going to grow, and e-commerce is going to continue to grow. So we need that capacity. With your Mississippi heritage, you are advantaged by not being in the three zip codes on the East Coast and the four zip codes on the West Coast that drive all of the media. I want you to tell our sophisticated world audience now what they're missing in the day-to-day -to -day discussion, and with your support of the president, the day-to-day -to -day discussion out there 
versus what they hear from New York, what they hear from L.A.? Well, I support uh, the, the two trade agreements that the president has signed or is about to sign. And those trade agreements are going to open up markets for uh, our customers throughout the world. And they're going to provide opportunities. And so that's why if you hear optimism in my voice, and you take that and you also take what's going on with Brexit and the fact that it looks like we won't have the hard uh, Brexit. Yeah. There's just some things that's causing uh, me to be a little more optimistic than a year ago. Are we hoping this is going to be a Brexit-free zone for the next Should, couple of days? we got to do a remote with him on a brown truck sometime. That's we very, could, very like, true. Know, we Can we get Tom driving one of the brown trucks? I'm not sure. We'd have to check out his <laughs> credentials. <laughs>